Welcome to Hoovy's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube, and you are looking at a very happy Hoovy because this Bentley Azure that I bought for only $25,000, that was formerly owned by Jean-Claude Van Tam. You all found the pictures and uh, confirmed it uh, with photos on the internet. This car is sorted. Not only is it sorted, but it was sorted for cheap, which never happens. Usually when you buy something like this that costs $400,000 new for $25,000, it is a massive basket case, but that's not the case with this Azure, $25,000, and I got an incredible, beautiful convertible land yacht, and it only cost $1,788 to fix. I know. Now, we'll start with the most expensive item, and that was the uh, mineral oil fluid leak, which if you owned any of these Bentleys or around them, you know they always leak mineral oil, but this one had a pig leak coming from the main pumps on these things, which are located in the V of the 6.75 liter turbocharged V8, and it was leaking a lot. They're actually powered by a push rod that runs this pump, and the seals will leak. It happened on my Turbo R, and it happened on this, and that was seven. $120 to fix. Now it's a little more labor intensive than the Turbo R because the intake with the intercooler and the modern ignition system was a little more complicated to get out of the way, but once you got to it, it was really straightforward. Only $720. My HVAC system, which wasn't working, it was just a uh, switch that had come loose. They charged up the air conditioning. That all worked. Only $340 to fix that. My seatbelt tensioner rebuild service, that was the one thing that's kind of a letdown here. $250 to do that, to take out the seats, send the seatbelts off, but only $155 to rebuild them. The letdown is the seatbelt pretensioner warning light is still on. So maybe it'll go off on its own eventually because there's no codes for the airbag light, or it could need some reprogramming with the airbag module itself because, well, when that stuff kind of breaks, the airbag module gets confused or it could be the one thing that I leave broken because when you buy a car like this, you always leave one thing broken, the superstitious wise, because when you fix that one thing, then something else will break. So I always try to leave one little thing broken. So I am absolutely thrilled to have this thing sorted for $1,788, which means I'm way under $30,000 into this beautiful Bentley Azure. Um, Anyway, when I bought this thing, I figured it would hold me over until I found the right Phantom drop head because I sold my Rolls Royce Phantom planning to buy a drop head, uh, but this has completely cured me of that. For only $25,000, I basically have 80% of a Phantom drop head right here, which would cost $125,000 for the cheapest one. So there's no way in my mind I could justify going to buy one of those. And these are much cheaper to keep running. Yes, they're expensive to keep running, way more expensive than a normal German or modern European car, but still not nearly as bad as a Rolls Royce Phantom. Now, my ownership was pretty blessed with my Phantom, but there was the one thing that made me mad, and that was the parts distribution. It's all done by BMW, and anybody with a BMW parts account, like Johnny the Car Ninja, can see exactly how much these Rolls Royce parts cost. And the Rolls Royce, the Phantom, right before I sold it, it had a little bitty clunk in the suspension. I mean, really, the lightest squeak ever, and it had to be really cold outside for you to hear it. And it came from a certain bushing that you would replace on both sides. And the cost on this part, according to his BMW website thing, was only $550 but Rolls-Royce wanted $1,800 for them. And despite him having a BMW account and being able to order or buy any BMW part, and this Rolls-Royce is owned by BMW, it's the same parts distribution, he wasn't allowed to buy Rolls-Royce parts. You have to go through a Rolls-Royce dealer. The part only costs $500 at the BMW distribution center, but Rolls-Royce wants $1,800 per side for the part. That's incredible markup. And with Rolls-Royce, the modern Rolls-Royce cars, the markup on all the parts is just absolutely insane. And it's so ridiculous that I really think they're doing it in a service to the owners where they're going to crash the value of these cars. These once $400,000 Rolls Royces are not going to be worthless $20,000, $30,000 cars because people aren't going to want to pay the money to keep them going. You have to be really careful with that. McLaren is another big example of this in my mind where they want $10,000 for a steering rack or $40,000 for a transmission that's made of glass. It just doesn't make any sense. The values of their cars will crash because as they go off warranty, Nobody's going to want to pay to keep them running. With this Azure, it's not really the case because it's the same parts they've been using in Bentleys for the most part for decades, and it's a lot of parts been special matchup, mix and match things to where you can keep these going for pretty reasonably. But they do, they do break a lot. So normally I'm the guy that tells you to never ever buy something, and then I show from first hand experience how horrible it is to own it. Uh, with one of these, 
you could actually get away with a decent ownership experience if you have realistic expectations. Now, there's my other car here, my other Bentley, that uh, hasn't been quite a rewarding experience, but uh, that's for a very good reason. So we'll check in on that and the other cars in the Hoopty fleet. The Mercy Lago is actually up here, and another Azure owned by a dealer that's for sale where they're doing some, some other work. You'll see how big of a part spin special these cars actually are. Weezered! Come look at this craziness here, Hoovy. This is a V8 turbo Mercedes. I haven't messed with these at all. What's going on? <sighs> valve covers. Valve. That's it, valve cover gaskets. Okay, and how much those, is valve covers? All those steel lines, those high pressure fuel, fuel lines have to come off. How much? $1,800. $1,800? 15 hours of labor. 15 hours of labor for valve cover gaskets? Yes. yes. All these injectors have to come out. The fuel rail has to come out. Hell nah. <laughs> Hell nah. I'll take the non-turbo ones. That's why the SLS is so much better to me. Wizard, nice job on the Azure. It's Thank you. wonderful. Mm -hmm. $1,700. That's very reasonable to fix a Bentley as well. Thank you. Yeah. Do you want to see what I spent it on already? You spent, did you buy shoes or a yacht? Well, you bought a yacht already. What you, no, a I actually, Rolex? I spent it on things that can make me money. I did something wise. Oh, okay. Let's go take a look. Bye, Magic Mike. Bye, Tyler. And I see you're selling your Alante, huh? Yes, $4,000. Contact Crazy D in the office. Really? Please buy my Alante. Please get it out of here. <laughs> okay, you got the plug. So what did you buy here? This is a beautiful Azure. 1997 or 8? So early 96. one. 96. 96, yeah, it's an early one. And look at this red interior. It's absolutely wild. It's a local dealership here in town that uh, needs you to fix the top, right? Mm -hmm. 8,000 miles on this thing. 8,000 miles, wow. So my car's had two top failures in the service records. One was like $8,000, the other one was seven. So it was uh, uh, pretty pricey to fix it, but uh, I guess you figured it out with, with what? A heart monitor? It looks kind of like an EKG monitor, doesn't it? This is the actual. That's specifically for the convertible top on these Azures. Yeah, but it looks very Mercedes-ish, I would say. Yes. It is. This ho the whole convertible top system is R129 parts. So we know this. You can send off all the parts to get rebuilt and all that. So that's what we're doing here. I actually, have a bunch of the cylinders out. And we're going to send them off to get rebuilt. So when mine fails again, what's the full tamale rebuild? You think going to be? For you, probably five or six grand, but. Probably more like eight for somebody else. Wow. Okay. Well, so you bought this? Actually, I rented that from Flying Spares. That's, I had to put up four grand just to rent it. <laughs> really? <thing>. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So if I don't send it back, they get to keep the money. I think you'll be sending this back. $4,000 for something that looks like it belongs in a, like a, a value center, a Goodwill yeah, donation it does. box. You could totally see that in a Goodwill or something. <laughs> right. So that's not what you bought. What did you buy? I bought... The scan tool for 1990 to 2010 Bentley Rolls Royce Omnitech. I see. Well, wow. has the round cable, the ride height cable, OBD2 cable, and the laptop with every service manual for every model. Okay. So how much did that set you back? Three thousand dollars. Three thousand dollars. So double my bill. You just invested. In equipment. Yes, because I'm going to get it back from working on that. Oh, you're anticipating. So I better keep it then, I guess. Yeah, huh? I think so. <laughs> Actually, with with this here, with the dealership, they they take in trade ins and they say they'll be sending them my way if they're happy with this work. So yeah, if we get more of these. I need that. Okay. Well, you're still working off and on on the Woody. Yes, we're about yes. to put the dash back in. Yes, the dash is close. The Spider. We are waiting. My beautiful Porsche Spider. We're waiting to get some other things done, like the Azure. And a few other cars. Oh, wizard. I can't wait. I can't wait. But uh, light at the end of the tunnel on the Turbo R, yes? So you found a leak in the intake somewhere. This is just for a little stumble, a little bitty misfire that I noticed. Has it been six months? Yeah. <laughs> six months ago. And poor wizard has been digging into this car. It's too old to have the modern computers to really go in and diagnose it like that that thing you just bought. Mm -hmm. uh, so you've been fighting it a little bit, yes? Yeah, there was a leak on the seal that goes around this throttle basically a throttle body there mm -hmm. we smoke tested it and it was just pouring out smoke out of there these systems cannot have any vacuum leaks they totally don't like it mm. 
Also, I tried to do a rebuild on this fuel distributor head with no success, and I understand that most shops don't have success on this. Right. I'm going to be sending this to CIS Flowtech. That's all they do. They are really, really good at these. Okay. No more guesswork on this. I'm going to get it done right. Yeah. Well, so you like the Azure better because of the modern ignition and electronic yes. fuel injection and all that stuff. It has uh, coil unplug ignition. And this is a good car. It and will be. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it when it's done, though. I, I already have one. Yeah. And the Murcielago, well, it's having a nose job. I'll do another video on the Murcielago. We're doing the final things that uh, uh, need to fix. After getting the transmission in and driving it for a while, there's some leaks, there's some lights, some other things that need to get sorted out. So this is like the buttoning up of the Murcielago. But the one thing I need to fix is this bumper, which is just torn up to heck. So I was going to pick it up to uh, take it... To the paint shop. You're gonna put that in your Azure? Yeah, I'm just realizing this thing has nostrils going somewhere. Somewhere. Yes, to the brakes. They, oh. They vent the brakes. Hmm. Those don't come off. They're part of the molding on it. Yeah, once you peel back the beautiful facade of the Mercy Law, you kind of see the Italian uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> craftsmanship here of this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my. Um, so I guess I'm hauling this in the Azure. Uh, Good luck. I hope it doesn't tear your seats or something. I guess we could put down some mats or something for you. Yeah. All right. The wizard didn't want the liability of, of doing this, so. No, I got it this far. You can take it from here. Okay. All right. Take that. Oh, it's okay. We need to probably put that seat recline a little bit. All right. Flies out. How much is the front Mercy Lago bumper? Probably. Probably ten or fifteen grand. Ten or fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah. All right. Send it. Well, what a nice practical utility vehicle this Bentley Azure is. It is just continuing <laughs> to amaze me. Now, it's definitely not an athletic car by any means. They gave it plenty of power, something like 400 plus horsepower. And when this turbo hits, well, not, not going to go too fast because of the bumper. Uh, it has a lot of power. But the braking and the, the handling, well, <laughs> not so much. It's better than a Rolls Royce in a lot of cars. It, it seems slightly athletic, but uh, no sports car. But I mentioned this plenty of times with land yachts. Modern Bentleys are just, well, too athletic. Any modern luxury car is too athletic and too sporty now because that's what automotive journalists want. They want a car that'll go fast around a track so they can say, oh, it handles amazingly. It can show off how good of a race car driver they are when really that's not really what you want in a luxury vehicle. You want this. You want smoothness. You want quality. You want presence. And this Bentley Azure has all of it. And I own it for less than $30,000. Just absolutely astounding. Look at this bumper dropped off at the paint shop and then I think it's the beginning of a beautiful long expensive friendship with this thing but since the cost of entry was so low I can handle some big repairs here and there. Thank you for watching. <laughs>